So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here on Friday, the 17th of April, 2020. Um, I hope you're all uh, good and um, 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 you, you stayed um, safe so far in this uh, still very, yeah, how can I say that? Um, 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 special environment with the uh, Corona shutdown. I, I hope everyone is fine um, and uh, on um, in, in good spirits in general. So today we uh, yeah we will look at a very very interesting topic. In fact, um, one second by the way. Let me just try to enlarge the screen. Yes, that should be fine. Um, discretionary automated trading. Uh, so this is a weird topic at uh, first glance, but I, f I think a very, very uh, um, great, very special one. And uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm really excited about, the, about today's topic, um, uh, not just because the topic itself is uh, very, very interesting. And one of um, my yeah, key ways of, of, of trading, in fact, so you will um, gain um, an insight on um, how I manage trades, how I enter trades, but also how I manage them. But um, yeah, coincidentally, uh, you will you will get um, uh, a direct insight in today's trades, in fact, because uh, today I intervened discretionary um, in two of my um, uh, trades. I am um, traded. I can already say right at the beginning that I'm not allowed to show you any live account statistics or something like that. So from a regulatory perspective, I was surprised myself to learn that, but it's not allowed to show um, uh, um, a real, real um, uh, um, um, account performances. But um, that's probably not even necessary because um, we will have a look at the demo account I run beside the live account. So you get a uh, direct idea of um, how, yeah, how today's trade potentially impact um, had an impact on my on my uh, trading performance so far. So before, but before we start with all this, let's have a look here at today's agenda first, um, get through this, and then um, we take it from there. So first of all, I want to give you a quick introduction to automated and manual trading. What are the key differences? Where to do? Uh, uh, where do the two ways of trading intersect? Um, then we want to um, also use to give a better idea um, um, on, on um, how to intervene in automated trading strategies, in fact, from a price action uh, perspective. So probably you recall we had a webinar um, one week, two weeks ago, something um, where we uh, gave a deeper insight into um, price action and, and how um, distribution areas, uh, areas of accumulation, um, how they um, appear in the chart and what to make out of this and, and use it from a trading perspective. And I also mentioned there that you can use, you don't need to trade based on this knowledge, but you can use it um, to optimize, for example, your automated trading. And uh, today we want to do exactly that and then we want to give a look behind the scenes. So what's the target of these discretionary interventions in your, in your um, automated trading? So it's, um, in fact, the target, the overall target is to smoothen the equity curve, respectively, to increase the so-called expected value um, in your trading. So expected value, once you're trading with a positive expected value, um, you're profitable. That's, that's the definition of profitability in trading, in fact. And, uh, well, smoothing the equity curve or increasing the um, expected value in your trading means become more profitable. Um, and that's that's what it's all about. And then, yeah, this is uh, the last point. I already said it right at the beginning, my way of combining automated and manual trading. And the good news is I can show it to you uh, in a, under current market conditions, how it works and, and what I did there. Um, still, it's um, um, uh, I, I can't really foresee how the price action uh, will play out now. Probably my intervention wasn't such a good idea today, but um, let's let's have, uh, um, have a look at, um, I, I haven't a chart open in the background so far, um, and so I have no idea what will how it will play out, but um, you will see it in real time, in fact. And uh, before we start, um, we now could start talking about my person and everything. Um, the most important thing you need to know is um, there was an interview I did together with Admiral uh, last year in June, July. And um, the link will appear in the chat box. 
below the YouTube um, uh, video, the recording, which will be available within the next hours. Um, and uh, you can get all information on my person. Um, in fact, where do I come from? What kind of academic background do I have? And why did I start trading and all this stuff? You can read it. What's the most important aspect here is I'm located in Berlin in Germany. And why is this of importance? It's of importance because Admiral Markets has an office here in Berlin. It's, uh, um, in, in Germany, but this is not the only office, in fact, but it has um, over 20 offices around the globe. And uh, why is this noteworthy? Well, it first of all it shows that Atmara Markets uh, is, is not just a global player in the world of uh, financial services, and especially um, a global player in the world of CFDs and FX, but it's also um, important for you as a trader because chances are very, very high that whatever issue you might have, whatever question might arise in your trading, how to set up an account, where to find an indicator, whatever, there's a very, very high chance that you will find someone who will help you out in your native language. Not only that, but there's also plenty of um, video material and different YouTube channels where you can see everything um, in your potential native language. So we're here um, and talking English, but still there's also a Czech, um, for example, um, 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 YouTube channel as one example, um, a Spanish one. So feel free to check it out. Um, I think this is a, a big plus when it comes to financial um, um, services, when it comes to making decision which broker you should choose. I think this is a very big plus um, in, in regards to your broker, um, besides the um, high competitiveness of Admiral in many, many aspects. So I went looking for example, at the market conditions, um, or not the market conditions, uh, the, the commissions and um, the, the prices you get, um, which is of high interest for a trader, for example. Uh, when talking about markets here in Germany, usually we refer to the DAX expert. So in fact, it's um, one of the most competitive, probably the most competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading, um, even under current market conditions with high volatility, um, slippage and everything. Uh, it's not a big issue. It's it's um, fascinating. It's it's really it's it's really great to see um, how um, still all these promises made um, are hold and 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 um, how how um, Admiral stands by its words. It's just great, and it's definitely something which is uh, noteworthy. But now enough of uh, of that. Let's have now a look at automated versus manual trading and get a, a better insight on this. Start with today's topic. So let's start with manual trading. And uh, as the name suggests, in fact, um, trades are entered by humans um, most of the time. In fact, manual trading, certainly I myself consider myself a manual trader, even though my, my signals are generated automatically or the trades are um, generated automatically, which means like uh, you enter an order and then once it's triggered, obviously, well, uh, it's, it's an automated process. It's not that you, but you have to enter it manually. Okay. That's what, what it refers to. And um, so trades are entered by humans who make their trading decision mostly based on technical, but some um, sometimes also based on fundamental or sentiment based patterns. So, um, it, um, myself, I myself um, um, look at the chart not just from a pure technical standpoint, but also look at the current BS. For example, when looking at today's price action, you've seen, um, I, I, I have to say, I came in mostly bearish. I, I had no reason not to expect um, a more very weak market close or weak market weekly market close this week. And we are still, probably there's a chance that we get to see something like that, but still uh, the tide has turned over the last um, hours, um, overnight in fact, with uh, the rumors um, or the news being spread that um, Jai Lead uh, Sciences, um, a biotechnical uh, and pharmaceutical company, um, made massive progress in regards to finding a potential vaccine or at least treatment when it comes to uh, COVID-19, which means then uh, that here there's now hopes that probably we are uh, seeing uh, um, um, a shorter period of, of this um, current shutdown continuing. So uh, that's something which I take into account. I, I also take into account sentiment uh, based um, 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 analysis. So what's the current bias in markets? So for example, when looking at uh, the, the, the sentiment which established after the high volatility over March, for example, to get an idea um, how sentiment plays out there, nearly everyone was very, very bearish 
I myself, I have to admit that I was very bearish too. Um, it's not that I that I panicked or something, but it was like I was sure that we definitely get to see a retest of the, um, the recent lows. Let's talk about the DAX around region 8,000 points. The thing is, everyone expected this. And this is then the moment where sentiment extreme kicks in. And uh, in markets, usually what everyone expects to happen usually does not happen. And this is exactly what we got to see. So if you are looking for um, um, a driver higher for, for this corrective move we've seen um, here in equities, um, then potentially it's because everyone expects a leg lower. Right now, the tide has turned a little, right? So if you look at the current um, news uh, feed, for example, if you look at uh, um, um, what markets are playing, um, you will hear most of the time, well, the Fed obviously has everything under control again. Um, so they're pumping billions, trillions of dollars into the market. There's enough liquidity now. They've bumped up their um, balance sheet by nearly 50% within four or five weeks. It's like um, the balance sheet goes vertical. And everyone thinks now everything's fine again. And especially now, if there is a treatment against COVID-19 and there are steps in the right direction in regards to vaccine being made and then we have, um, um, for example, the, the shutdown um, not as long as anticipated. Everything this well, uh, there's no real reason not to expect markets to make a new all-time highs quite soon. In fact, so this is now the sentiment which establishes, um, um, and this is something which is very, very um, dangerous for bulls. In fact, because now the tide has turned, and there's another sentiment extreme, in my opinion, which uh, gives us an elevated chance. Um, especially if these rumors, which are currently holding the markets um, off from selling off quite sharply into the weekly um, market close, that we are probably seeing a next wave, more aggressive wave lower. Okay, this is what you can understand when it comes to um, sentiment. And this is something I take into account too. Why is this of importance? It's of importance because based on that, I sometimes skip trades. So, which means I, I discretionary intervene already. So, which means I, I have a picture, I have an opinion of the market, and then I look how is the signal um, generated, the automated strategy. And then from time to time, it could be that I say, I'm not taking this trade and all with one target to optimize the um, expected value of my trading, of my trading strategy, in fact, to smooth my equity curve. But before we come to this again, let's have a look here at, at automated trading. So in fact, the same um, when, when looking at automated trading um, is, uh, or when looking at manual trading, and, and, and then at automated trading. Well, in fact, it's very, very sim um, um, simple, not it's um, the same. It's, it's very equal to some extent, in fact, um, because when you automate your trading, you probably located a certain pattern. And then based on that, you um, automate a strategy around this. So let's say once this or that pattern occurs, you program your trading um, a platform um, to trade long or short. For whatever reason, and again, it depends on what the what the pattern suggests. What will happen next to anticipate then uh, the, the the move, in fact, of um, uh, yeah of the of the market where this pattern occurs, and um, so. In this case, trades are automatically entered and completely taking out the human component. So once you spotted this, this pattern, there might be times uh, when you say, well, but this is not really the pattern I was looking for because of this and that candle being not really fitting my, um, um, my, my picture, but still I defined it to be okay. Um, and these um, second guesses you're, you're taking here are completely taken out because the um, automated system um, just overrules your emotions, your feelings. It just trades in direction of the signal being generated based on the input parameters you gave here. And then we will see at the end where the reason why you trade this is because back to results show that what you do here, if you continue doing that and do it over and over again, that you um, see a growing equity curve. That's what it's all about. And taking out your emotions here is one key element. But at the end of the day, as you may have guessed now, emotions to some extent, at least the positive, I try to make it more positive emotions than negative emotions. So that's the um, uh, a long-term target you're um, I'm facing as a trader than from a mental perspective. So what I try to achieve in my trading is that I um, still allow myself to be emotional or to, to have this kind of, let's call it gut feeling. Um, but I, I, um, 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 
I write it down. I, I write down um, what I feel and how this feeling plays out then in the long run. So it's not just one trait, but it's um, 10, 100 traits I take. I write down the emotions. And once I got emotional, um, I will look, did the emotion have a positive or negative impact on my trading, in fact? Um, this is completely taken out when fully trading automated. So just to give you a, a better idea of what I'm talking about. And um, both approaches, manual trading and automated trading, um, sh both should follow clear, predefined rules and have a positive expectancy, even though one might argue that automated is truly statistic-based. Manual trading has this emotional component um, um, or this, this attachment to the mo emotional component um, to it. Um, but all in all, it comes down to, in both cases, you have a pattern and one, you're trading manually, and you probably skip the trade because of this and that reason, this and that emotion, while in a fully automated way, you have the same pattern, but you keep on trading it. And you you rely on statistics based on a back test result, um, um, given a certain certain um, time span you looked at. So now let's do the following. Let's have a look here at the one trading um, example, uh, which everyone can follow, by the way, in our trading spotlight community. Um, you can, you can, well, let's, let me just see, do I have it open here? I think so. I, I should have. Yeah, there we go. So this is how uh, trading spotlight looks like. I give you the link now. Um, it's also in the YouTube um, description box, but I can give it to all attendees right here. Uh, I, I call it TY. Okay. It's uh, for traders yard. This is uh, the community. And what we did here, we set up this, um, uh, community to give you as attendees a chance to ask your questions not just in the webinar but sometimes you probably um, come across um, some questions which arise let's say in my case now over the weekend um, so it's friday so saturday sunday you think about what i just presented to you and you get an idea the only problem now is well, if the webinar is already over, you can ask a question. In this case, it's possible because you just go to the community and you can ask here all your questions. And you can see we are very active. It's not just me, by the way, but there's also Marcus who runs usually the webinars on Wednesday. And it's also Paul. Let me just see. Here's Paul um, with, this, with his thoughts. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them here and they will be answered. Okay, so that's you can you can be sure that this will definitely happen. And what I do here within this community, and let's come back to today's presentation, is um, that I post two times a day purely statistically based automated setups, one on the DAX, one on the S&P. And uh, in the DAX, for example, and this is the example we look at here, I uh, spotted the pattern over a quite long period of time and found out that it's profitable, in fact, to trade this um, um, pattern. And in this case, it's the so-called open range breakout. Um, and the definition of it can be found um, in the community or you can you can follow uh, the, the trading signal or this trading signal, the, the, the system which is generating uh, the signals here, there, because I post the trades there every day. But there's also some articles on the traders block uh, section in um, um, on the website, agnamarkets.com. There you can also see which parameters are um, used here. But now we can also uh, show, I will also show them to you here. So what I did is here, I took a, um, a snapshot of the DAX. Oh, by the way, five minutes. <laughs> it's minute and it's a German word for minutes. So um, it's a five minute chart. So here, the red lines, the horizontal lines, this is the open range, the high and low between eight and 9.05. Um, in this case, CET, now it's CEST, um, it's summertime. But uh, what, you, what you spot here is um, the high and the low between eight to 9 a.m. Uh, at 9.05 a.m. The reason for 9.05 is simple because at 9 uh, a.m. German time, you have the so-called Xitra open. And Xitra open means that this is the time when the spot market uh, comes uh, to life and then you see um, uh, big volume um, 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 coming into the market, which usually results in some uh, choppy um, price moves and the up on the ups and downside. And to filter out that yeah, noise, um, I use 9.05, in fact. Um, and uh, that's the reason for, for the time. And then you can see here, what we say is we identify our advantage based on this um, blue exponential moving average in this case, it's an EMA 50. And we say, once we trade below and break out on the downside, we take the short trade respectively, once we trade above and um, the breakout occurs on the upside, we're taking the long side. 
if we trade above but break out on the downside um, for whatever reason does not happen very often but sometimes it happens then no take no trade is taken um so that's that's one important um, aspect here so that's in fact the the, the the rule which we follow here and uh then what we say is we define our risk by the width of the range so we place our stop here at the high of the range i i have not um, um put this into this chart here um and this is something we define as one r and then we place a take profit level two R away. So we, we duplicate this range width, let's say it's 40 points. Then we say our entry point is here. And then we um, subtract, um, um, subtract, sub, subtract, I think is the right word, right? Um, so we subtract the 80 points then, two times 40 points, the range width, um, and place our uh, take profit level accordingly. And um, in this example, this is what what's what was hit so that's the pattern you recognize and then once you see this um pattern occurring over and over again and you probably spot that there might be a chance to trade this profitably you run a back test and that's exactly what i did here in this example so it's just a time span between the uh, 26th of, of um, july 16 to till the 16th of, of august 17. so just it's just to 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 illustrate how this looks like so usually the time span should be way longer that's um definitely something you should take into account but for illustration purposes that might that that should be enough here so this is what you can get then um when you test this via and for example expert advisor you can easily um uh, automate the strategy i just presented and then run a back test based on um yeah based on whatever time span you you want to look at in fact so as long as there's enough um, data delivered within your meta trader in this case and that's what what's then generated you have the equity curve here you have um, um, input parameters in regards to hit rate average gain average loss and all this um, and uh, at least for this time period here you can see that this is profitable the same is also true there's a wider time span and i've um, presented this also in a trading spot a webinar um, in regards to the s p 500 open range breakout the system is very similar and even though you have to adapt the um, not just only um, um, opening and, and close time um, due to the the um, um, Wall Street opening later in the afternoon in our case but also in regards to which um, um, time aggregation you use in the case of the S&P it's the M15 then it's not the EMA 50 as in the five minute chart here in the DAX but it's the EMA 10 in fact but uh, the parameters are the same so you look at the time spent then from uh, 330 till 415 um, German time in this case to define your range and then you say breakout on the upside once we trade above the EMA 10 and then we take a long trade and the other way around and I could also present to you now um, um, a backtest result based on that but it, it, it's not it's not um, um, necessary in fact so <clears throat> what we want to do is now we want to see how this automated trading approach which could easily be automated in fact the trades are generated um, 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 fully automated via vps um, um, in in the in the meta trader for from our markets here um, so this is fully automated but now the question arises okay if i can fully automate this and I, I know that this is profitable i could easily run this but how could i smoothen this equity curve because now something interesting happens in fact um, and i just have an idea i haven't prepared it yet let me just see how I can do this um, let me just see um, shall we do this shall, shall we uh, shouldn't we well, 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 well. Let's do this. So let's have a look here at um, a website. It's, it's my, um, um, it's a German website. It's a German website. I set it up um, hand in hand with my a second book, which was published, published in German. So it's uh, not very important here because it's a German book and we're having an English speaking webinar. But what's interesting is probably uh, I have a website um, for the book itself to make sure that people reading the book have a place to come to where they can play around with the input I deliver there. So it's on building a profitable trading strategy, in fact. And um, in this context, I generated um, uh, a website or I have a website which has a Monte Carlo simulator um, implemented. So that's something we also made a topic in one of the webinars before. Um, and we want to use now the input parameters. We look at here at 500 trades. Uh, I know the hit rate is around 42%. And um, now we create 15, um, um, 15 
equity curves. Here's the payoff ratio, average gain to average loss. It's 1.58 to one. And we take 1% risk per trade, let's say. And now we generate um, different equity curves here. So you can start the simulation. And now what I want to show you, that's the reason why we're here, is um, you have in this um, simulation alone, for example, an equity curve one, which shows the biggest max drawdown here at 28.4%. We can now run another simulation. Let's see, now it's even worse, 38.5%. So that results mainly out of the fact that we are risking 1% per trade here, in fact. So now the thing is, um, drawdowns happen, the strategy itself stays profitable. You just need to trade it long enough, in fact, and given um, the fact that you can stabilize um, uh, the input parameters, especially in regards to hit rate and payoff ratio, the only problem is um, <clears throat> that such drawdowns uh, are usually a first um, sign that something's not going so well, let's say. Or you look at it from a professional perspective. Imagine yourself to be, um, um, uh, yeah, you're, you're a hedge fund manager to some extent. You're your own hedge fund. You're managing your own funds, um, but professionally. So you're managing your account accordingly so that it grows. And what I ask myself right at the beginning, once I start a trading, um, where I start every trading endeavor, um, every, every account I start to trade, it's what do I expect here in not just regards to return, but also what do I expect in regards to uh, drawdowns? What, what risk am I willing to take? And um, for example, if I present myself with the strategy I trade on an account and run a Monte Carlo simulation and I see such a max drawdown of nearly 40% happening, that would be... Um, a no, it's a no, no. I, I, I wouldn't like myself to trade an account with a strategy where I have a risk of losing 40% of my funds. That's just too much. Okay. My, my personal threshold, for example, is 25%. I know that really well, and that works well with me, but 40% um, is just too much. How can I reduce this? For example, by reducing the position size, um, let's cut this in half, for example, and risk only 0.5%, um, then you're probably coming out somewhere around 20%, and that perfectly uh, fits my personal, let's call it the risk threshold. But still, um, this is just the automated um, strategy given and not including any kinds of learning process taking place, for example, not considering um, any signs um, the market might, might, might send to you um, to optimize a strategy, in fact. So that was one question, by the way, which came up um, um, several days ago from someone who asked a question in the Traders Yard community asking, what could we do? And I think this, this webinar here perfectly illustrates what could be done, in fact, to optimize a strategy once uh, the market shows that um, the strategy does not correspond really well with um, uh, the current market conditions. For example, this is a classic breakout approach. Once you have such a breakout approach, you know you need volatility, but you also know that you need trending market conditions. So choppy market environments is usually not the market environment in which such breakout approaches work well. So what could you do? Well, you could not just reduce the risk during this time span, but you can also use your knowledge in regards to price action to adapt the strategy accordingly. And this is what now, what this um, um, uh, um, webinar in fact is about. So you have an automated trading strategy and you run this, and now you try to intervene here from a discretionary perspective, discretionary perspective to smoothen the equity curve, respectively to reduce, for example, potential drawdowns or, and or, but first of all, it's about the drawdowns and getting um, uh, the risk to, to, um, um, to a level, which is fine with yourself. But um, you can also certainly try to increase the overall profitability by gaining more, let's say, and try to increase the average gain of a trade, for example. But first of all, um, we look at it from a quite simple perspective. You probably remember this um, um, chart here, this, this graphic from the webinar um, on price action several uh, weeks ago. And um, I had this chart, the same in fact here, with um, uh, mentioning that you want to build your position here within this green rectangle and try to avoid or not just avoid, not really avoid, but probably reduce the risk um, once uh, you enter this, this area of distribution here, um, you want to reduce the position size and not be too aggressive. You want to be aggressively buying here 
expecting the market will break out and continue with its upward momentum, upwards momentum here. It has built already, but you want to avoid to be too aggressive once the market enters this red zone, let's call it. So I um, I'm summed this up by saying building a position when the market makes new highs into the distribution area is not optimal. And why it's not optimal was just explained several seconds ago. Um, so now the thing is, this knowledge alone can be used for such an automated trading strategy. So let's have a look at the um, next slide here, the target of manual interventions. So what you do is in fact, you ask a question, how do I find the advantage in my trading? Um, so you have it already for your own strategy, but the thing is um, that this is only your time frame you're looking at. But you probably remember um, the dominating time frame I introduced during this price action webinar. So what I know is if I trade M5, so as we do in the um, um, shown strategy, well, then my dominating time frame is H1, right? It's the hourly chart. So when I know this, that H1 is the dominating time span, well, what do I do is then I wonder, where do we trade right now? So for example, um, if I spot a sequence of higher highs and higher lows on H1, and I see that the market, let me just probably do it that way. Let me just show it to you here. So if I see a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, please excuse that it's not very uh, beautiful now what I'm doing here. Uh, but if this is H1, okay, and you see the sequence of higher highs and higher lows, well, then you know, very roughly speaking, that the advantage is obviously on the long side. Certainly, it depends on how many um, um, legs up did we have, uh, did we got, um, um, did we see so far, and all this. But um, all in all, you can see a sequence. Say, see, say a sequence of higher highs and higher lows is usually an indication that the market is trending higher. Okay, now the question is: Okay, when looking at this move now, uh, where, where do I trade? What, what, how do we? How do we call this? Well, we call this as we introduced it. We call this. The so-called, I call it now ACC, it's for accumulation. That's the area where usually big players start to build their positions in, okay? So if I spot the sequence of higher highs and higher lows, I can easily say, okay, the overall advantage, my dominating time frame finds itself in a long environment right now. Um, and in addition to that, we're in a region of um, accumulation here, an area of accumulation, which means that usually, um, Roughly speaking, you would probably buy a long position here in this area to um, try to anticipate a break higher. So usually that's what you're, what you're targeting on. So now let's come down to your traded time frame. Let's have a look at M5 here. And let's assume that you now have an automated signal being generated as we uh, just gave the parameters. Um, so we have our open range and we know that once we trade above the EMA 50, for example, on M5 and we break out on the, on the, on the upside of the range, we define between 8 to 9.05 a.m. German time. Well, we have a long trade. So if this is happening here in a region of accumulation, in this sequence, well, what would you, what would you do? Or, or would, would you be happy, let's say, once you see that? Short answer, yes, sure. Because once you trade now a long signal, I, I um, show this here with this arrow up. Um, once you have your signal being generated, um, you're happy to see the long signal being generated because you obviously trade in direction of the dominating advantage. And you're not only trading in direction of the overall advantage, but you're also trading in an area which you'd be happy to buy since we are trading here in the region of accumulation, which means you're easily taking this, this long trade and are happy to trade it with the um, risk you're willing to take. By the way, one second, please. I have to... to uh... <clears throat> Okay, better. <laughs> so um, now let's assume the following. So you take easily this trade. It's a no-brainer. Let's, let's call it NOB, okay? It's the no-brainer trade. So now let's assume you're on M5 and a short signal is generated because the market currently finds itself in a corrective move, as you can see here. So, um, and a short signal is generated. What would you do now? We are very, it's a very roughly speaking, um, but what would you do now? Would you be happy to take a short trade? Well, 
in case of M5, yes. And certainly you're probably um, arguing, well, it's a short-term trading setup and we see a corrective move here probably. It extends probably, the trend is broken and then we see um, the market dipping even lower, which would be very favorable for M5. But you need to explain this long-term or a longer time than you need to explain the M5 long setup. And this alone shows you probably it's not such a good idea to, to be too aggressive. So, which means here in this case, it's a brainer. You have to think about it. And that's why it's probably wise to say, well, I probably reduce the position size. When I'm usually taking 1% risk on the trade, which you would definitely do here in no-brainer setup, well, you're definitely not really willing to take this 1% um, risk in a brainer environment, which means you're probably reducing the risk to, let's say, 0.5%, just roughly speaking. So this is now the, um, um, uh, let's, let's, Probably do it now. That's fine. It's okay. So let's let's have a look here now. Now you're entering high, higher high, and what's happening here is now you're entering the dis. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not a B. It's a D. So it's the distribution area. This is where the risk reward for long sequence gets unattractive, and um, while it's still a given long environment chances become or increase that rather sooner than later, there will be a corrective move, right? So this very likely that there will be such a, such a like lower corrective move. Still, the, the long sequence is given, but a corrective move. And since you're trading M5, well, now the tide turns. The tide turns in a direction where you say, okay, you see the breakout to new highs. You're trading in a direction of distribution. And now let's talk again about your M5 setup and the question, would you take a long signal here easily in the M5 um, um, automated ORB setup? It's the open range breakout setup I just introduced to you. The question is, no, it's a brainer. It becomes from a no-brainer here from the region of accumulation, it becomes now a brainer because you have to think about this. On well, the market, pushed already to a quite elevated level. And certainly there's a chance that now the market will potentially squeeze higher, but still, long-term uh, or, or um, um, H1 long engagements are getting unattractive from a risk reward perspective. So you're not probably not so happy to take an aggressive long trade here on M5 once you trade in the region of uh, distribution. So what would you do then? Um, well, you probably reduce the risk. You take it from 1%, which you easily take here, no brainer in a no brainer environment, since you're trading in a region of accumulation area, well, you're probably reducing it now because now chances increase that in the dominating time span, which is usually driving the price higher also in the lower time frames, then, uh, which is then probably not given anymore because those market participants seeing the market entering new, uh, new high territory, let's call it, and the region of, of, of distribution or an area of this distribution, well, they would probably um, see diminishing demand here, which will naturally result in a higher than um, usually expected um, probability that this breakout here on M5 in the open range setup is probably potentially more likely to be a fake breakout, okay? So that's why you become a brainer or it becomes a brainer here and why you probably are more willing to reduce your risk. Now let's have a look here at M5. This is probably the most complex one now because the thing is you could easily argue now, well, we're at an elevated level, chances of a corrective move increase, but still we shouldn't forget the market is in a long sequence with higher highs and higher lows. So while I definitely take here M5, the M5 no brainer in the accumulation area, with 1% risk, that's definitely not what I like or what, what I want to do here um, once we enter this, this um, region of, of distribution um, and in an anticyclical environment. Still, chances start to increase that um, the market will rather sooner than later see a corrective move, which means it becomes, uh, let's call it, and no in brackets brainer, um, which means we know that the overall advantage is still long 
on H1, but M5 is yet it's it's too aggressive to aggressively trade against this environment. So because let's let's face it, once you see such a sequence or such a strong trend higher. There's a reason for that. There's obviously more the demand than supply for whatever reason. There might be fundamental drivers, central bank intervention. There might be sentiment extremes building or sentiment also from a commitment of traders perspective, big speculative money pouring into the market for whatever reason. Um, so you don't want to fade this momentum. Still, once this demand diminishes somewhere in the future, well, there's a chance that this M5 open range breakout trade probably has a high probability to turn out to be profitable, to, to um, um, result in a profit. And so this is the moment then when I'd say, okay, I won't trade it with 1% risk as I do here in the M5 long signal in the accumulation area, but I probably willing to trade it more aggressively with 0.0. Um, percent risk per trade. And this is in fact how such a um, intervention could look like. So this is um, now, I mean, I'm sorry, really sorry for, for this, for this um, uh, ugly picture, but um, I, I hope that, that you, you get the idea um, um, behind this. Let me just, by the way, look in the uh, chat box right now. Okay, one, one second. It's like, uh, With the domination chart, H1 bullish, but with the execution chart, so our traded chart is M5, which is uh, bearish at this point, um, which chart should I use? Well, I should trade the signal in, uh, in my traded time frame. No, no question about that, because if I do not trust the strategy, I don't need to trade it. So this is, um, I trade the signal, but what I try to uh, manage here is how much risk am I willing to take? So in your um, um, uh, example, so dominating time span, it's H1, higher highs, higher lows, H1. Um, and we have this now, let's have a look here. Oh, that's not so good. Uh, okay, there we go. So now, here in this environment, distribution area, this is where um, it becomes more likely that, that we'll get to see a corrective move, which means that then um, I'd take the risk from initially 1% I'm willing to take down to 0.7%. So you're using the higher time frame, our dominating time frame, to find out whether we are in a region of accumulation or distribution, and then take it from there in regards to the risk you're willing to take in your automated trading strategy, automated traded strategy in the lower time frame in M5. Okay, yeah. So I have to, by the way, hurry up a little because now, because now um, uh, this this escalated a little. But um, so. We, we have now here um, uh, the sum up, in fact, of what I just presented in a very detailed way. Accumulation area, trade aggressively in direction of the trend. Distribution area, trade, if at all, conservatively in direction of the identified advantage. So which means long signals which are generated should be taken cautiously and probably you should reduce the risk, let's say from 1% you usually take once you trade aggressively or as usual down to 0.5, for example. Okay, so now um, you, you will probably want to know how can I find out whether I'm successful in what I'm doing? So uh, if I intervene, um, you probably still have the question, how can I find out um, whether my interventions make sense or not? And this is something which I overcome by trading two accounts with the same approach. Um, but one, which is live, and the other, which is a demo account, in fact. So there is a slight difference, certainly, because of slippage, which might occur in one or in the other. But after doing this now for years, I can assure you that most of the time, the signals in both accounts are generated. And there's just a small um, adaptation necessary in regards to slippage. Um, at least when it comes to using um, a live account from Admiral and a demo account from Admiral Markets. So I'm not sure how this is at other brokers, but in case of Admiral, I can assure you uh, that there is definitely not such a big difference here. And um, so this is then what I do. Well, and then I have the automated strategy, okay? Um, in both accounts running and I intervene in my live account, but in the demo account, I keep on trading um, continuously the fully automated approach. So once I spot here 
um, such a um, given example as shown to you, uh, then I intervene, I reduce the position size, for example, based on, let's say, knowing that we're in an accumulation area, for example, and a short signal is generated in an overall long sequence, for example, which I don't do in the demo account. Um, and then I compare these two. So what I do is, in fact, it's a very simple approach. I track my intervention performance in points of R's, in fact, and collect the data in Excel. So just to give you an idea how this, how this looks like, this is the next slide. So here I compare then my results. So if I perform better, that's um, the, uh, the short take of this. If I perform better when I intervene, uh, I continue to do so since I smooth my equity curve, increase my expectancy. You sure might agree once I trade, let's say with a reduced risk, once I um, 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 see a trade which does not work out well and I only risk 0.5%, um, well, I only have a, um, a setback in my equity curve by 0.5%, while I have in the demo account one by 1%, right? So the drawdown naturally will be reduced in my life environment. Um, and if I perform worse, that's also an option. So I intervene, I, I, I see myself intervening, but I do not better, but in fact worse, I will stop this. Now, this is where um, some, some experience comes into play. So what I, for example, would say is you need... Um, 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 yeah, a, a data, you, you need a, a sample size you work with. So for example, what I would say is you can collect your data. And by the way, how does it look like? I have it on the next slide. This is um, an example of my intervention um, sheet in Excel. So this is how it looks like. I'll performance in R. And then I have here point 2.2, for example, R's I perform better than the basic strategy. Um, here in this case, let's have a look. Do I have a bad one? Certainly I have one. Yeah, for example, here, minus one, minus one. Um, how can this happen? It's um, very simple. Uh, this can, for example, happen uh, once I, 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 I um, 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 uh, take a trade out, let's say one R before I reach my uh, take profit level, for example. So that's, that's one way to, to, to get this. And then I sum this up at the end. So I, I think it becomes obvious. For example, here, minus 1.7. Um, that might be an occasion where I was stopped out, break even, and the market then turned around and hit the target level. So that might happen, for example, once the market breaks out in direction, um, you gain something like one R, and then you trail the stop to break even, the market rebounds to the breakout level and then takes the take profit level from there. You are stopped out break even while the market hits your take profit level. And this is then how this looks in the Excel sheet and in the intervention sheet because I intervened. The basic strategy was not um, stopped out due to the fact that the initial stop wasn't hit. It was just returning to the entry point, but not to the stop point. And this is how minus 1.7 um, um, then shows itself. Yeah, and this is then exactly how, how this, how this um, um, looks like. And you add this up, let's say you give yourself 100 trades or you give yourself a one month period, for example, and you check then how you performed in um, um, relation, so in your life account, in relation to your, to your demo account. And this is how you can improve your trading. You can see, do my interventions make sense? If they don't make sense, stop them. If they make sense, continue because it has an overall positive impact on your trading. And um, at the beginning of the webinar, um, I, I told you that I want to show you um, a real example. And that's exactly what I want to do now. The positive, the good thing about this is two good things <laughs> happening right now. Um, first of all, what I show you now, it's a demo account, okay? So that's why I can show it to you. You have the demo account here. Um, the live account, I could show you, you to you here too. So you can also see that this is um, um, a VPS, a virtual private server. Um, and so what I want to show you is now the trades are still open. You can, you can see here, there are several strategies I'm trading. Um, and now let me show you another sheet I, 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 I prepared before I started. So uh, this is a real life example you can, you can see here, okay? Um, so what you can see here is the initial stop for two trades I took out already discretionary um, was 601 and the other was 584, okay? And then um, those two that were long trades, the market um, squeezed higher here, which was beautiful. And you can see it here, by the way, I fell short 15 and 19 points, I think, to hit the take profit level, which is, this is frustrating enough, okay? But still, it's okay. It's part of the game. I, I, um, I, can, I can deal with that. But now the thing is that the market traded lower and now you can see here, this is the EMA um, um, uh, 50 in this case I'm using here. 
Is it right? I hope so. Yeah, I think that must be the EMA 50, yes. Um, and uh, once the market breaks below that level, I have um, I'm seen that usually the tide turns then. And uh, it seems as if this move was not sustainable. I took out the trades both here at 672. Uh, and the gain for both trades were 0.3R and 0.4R. And now something, in my case at least, beautiful happens uh, because the market did not stop there, but continues to trade lower. And you can see here, those two dotted lines, um, these are the stop levels, one at 601, this is the higher one here, and the other at 584, this is the lower one. And now, if we continue to drift lower, and probably the, the two trades will stop that, will be stopped out here. Um, now, what happens is that I will document this in my Excel sheet as follows. I gained on one strategy, 0.3R, and on the other 0.4R, while hopefully that makes things way easier. Um, and if the market drops here and, and stops out both trades, this is minus one R in one strategy and minus one R in the other, which means that I performed 1.3, respectively 1.4R better than the basic strategy, which means this is a plus in, regard, in terms of my personal equity. So I made profit on a trade by discretionary intervening into the market while the basic strategy would have been stopped out. Still, it's, it's profitable. So I, I still believe the strategy um, remains profitable, even if now these two trades will be stopped out. Um, but in my case, thanks to my, my market experience, whatever, however you put this, um, at least in these two cases here, I smoothened the equity curve because I'm not seeing a minus one R and minus one R, but in fact, I see a plus 0.3 R and a plus 0.4 R, um, which is, better than losing money, obviously, right? And this is um, adding to my overall profitability in my trading. And um, yeah, so that's, that's just the, the um, example. I promised it at the beginning and that's why I wanted to uh, share it with you here. And now we have to hurry up because I, I, um, uh, <laughs> I, I should be ready by now. So summary, um, manual and automated trading have both pros and cons. So manual trading is more flexible. And it uh, can be of high use, especially in volatile market environments. I think this is something probably many have seen. Um, automating trading reduces, on the other hand, the emotional component and thus especially negative emotions, cognitive biases, um, having a negative impact on the overall profitability um, of a given approach, in fact. And um, when you still combine these two, uh, then it's, it's possible to uh, get the pros of one and pros or get reduce the, the, the cons of one approach um, um, and, and, and the other and in fact try to uh, profit from it um, only from a, from a positive perspective which can overall increase the profitability in your trading. So both combining both uh, can be achieved by using, for example, price action knowledge as shown and comparing one's performance to the performance of the pure basic strategy. And, uh, oh yeah, and yeah, if you, if you do better, continue to do what you're doing, while if you do worse, document it and stop doing it because it increases or it decreases your overall profitability. It's a simple approach, but I think a highly effective one, especially in such a given um, abstract environment um, we face every day when trading the markets, right? So don't forget to join us next time. Paul will be here um, on Monday, same time, um, and uh, we'll talk to you about intermediate to advanced scalping strategies. And uh, he will give a quick recap on scalping markets with the MT4. What does a trader need to be aware of when scalping markets and what are some advanced ways to scalp markets? And he gives a look at some scalping tactical uh, scalping tactics, I'm sorry, um, on popular markets. Same time, Monday, London, uh, 2 p.m. 20th of April and uh, check your inbox for the webinar link once you're here uh, now in the uh, live event. If you're um, uh, watching this on YouTube, feel free to check out the uh, um, registration page for the webinar trading spotlight on admiralmarkets.com. Go to the educations tab webinars and then the trading spotlight webinars and uh, for more analysis education go to exactly here admiralmarkets.com. Um, here are the contact details fully regulated broker, there's a risk disclaimer. Thanks for your attention and um, all the best from my end. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend, happy trading. Talk to you next week again. I look forward to it. See you.